Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Live and Live. Today we're going to start the Caveman chapter. The Stone Age. The day a free-spirited boy and his friend Gory have come of age has arrived. In a time before smoke spoken communication, man possessed a keen nose indeed. Through his sense of smell, man could find any beast or avoid lurking danger. So each one of these chapters has its own like story presentation style, as well as... Uh, small minor gameplay mechanics uh, this one is my favorite of all the chapters we're starting strong I think in my opinion uh, particularly because of the way they present the story there's no spoken dialogue everything in this game is presented either through uh, those bubbles or through incredibly exaggerated sound effects uh, or like sprite animations like movements facial animations and stuff like that and I really appreciate that I really enjoy that style. <clears throat> As I get older, I come to appreciate goofier shit <laughs> more. <laughs> it's, I think, one of the reasons why Final Fantasy V is my favorite uh, Final Fantasy game, and Final Fantasy XIII is low on my list. Um, but... Like I said, this is my favorite. We're going to go enjoy it. This this chapter is also the most RPG-like. You uh, go through dungeons. You upgrade your equipment. You get party members. And this right here, this guy, he's fabulous. He has a lizard on his crotch. Just roll with it. Don't question it. <clears throat> one of the things... I think each one of these chapters might have a different director. I know that... Each one of the chapters had like a different concept artist. Uh, it was like a big deal at the time, where like each one of the chapters had like a famous manga artist design the characters. So like if you look at the official artwork for each of the characters, everyone looks like they were drawn by a different artist because they were. <clears throat> and they all have vastly different styles. So this little mammoth sprite I find interesting. Uh, mainly because Live Live doesn't have random encounters largely. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a few sections where there are random encounters, but uh, the way the encounters work in this game is there's like an entity on the screen. If you bump into it, it initiates a random encounter. But in this chapter, <clears throat> all the enemies on the screen are invisible, which means that these. Uh, mammoth sprites are used on in this little sequence and nowhere else. Also, <laughs> love the little baby mammoth. So, let's go ahead and start the prehistoric chapter, Contact. Our main character's name is Pogo, and we have Control. Time to sword, less than a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, we have Pogo here. We are level 1. We have 144 hit points. And our experience is 0 out of 100. Levels are always 100 experience. Um, what changes as you gain levels is the amount of experience enemies give. Enemies basically have two levels of experience that they give you. <clears throat> they give a whole lot of experience if they're higher level than you. And they give like significantly less experience if you're higher level than them. It's not something you can control, it's not something you really should worry about. But just be aware that that's a thing that happens. You have six stats over there. You have attack, defense, power, speed, vitality, IQ. You can alter those stats by equipping gear. You have five pieces of armor, a headgear, left and right arm, chest piece, boots, and five up to five accessories. Uh, your attack power comes entirely from your weapon. And your defense comes from the defense off of your armor. Interesting, though, is that the attack from your weapon seems to play a very minor role in the power of your moves. In so much as for Pogo, I can verify that having uh, more attack power only affects two of his moves. It affects his uh, base move here, Bash Bash. And it affects another move he gets later called Boom Boom. That's it. It doesn't raise the damage of any of his other moves. Uh, I did do some testing for 
through this game to see how, like what moves are affected by what stats. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of testing on like what moves or how like the attack power of weapons affects a lot of moves, and I didn't do a lot of testing for defense because those are largely they're not. Uh, meaningful choices that you get to make. You're just going to want to get the highest number you can on those. But at the same time, the other four stats are meaningful choices because while you're going to want to maximize your attack and defense, uh, different moves use different stats. So, you know, do you maximize your speed to raise the moves that you, uh, power of the moves that use that? Or what moves even use speed, you know, and that was the question that I wanted to answer. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of hearsay on the mechanics of this game, and a lot of, well, this is what I saw. So I'm going to tell you what I witnessed personally, and then things I've read and heard. Um, so as far as I can tell, power is strictly there to raise the strength of moves that use it. I didn't see any other effects. Uh, at all for raising it up. It might affect accuracy. Um, I'm not sure. Same thing with speed might also affect accuracy. I heard that speed raises the uh, lowers the charge time of some of your of your moves. Like moves in this game either come out instantly or they have a charge time of uh, varying lengths. And I read on a bunch of places that speed reduces that charge time. But, me personally, did not see that. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, take, take that how you will. Uh, <clears throat> I can verify that Vitality and IQ do reduce the damage you take from attacks. Specifically, Vitality reduces the damage you take from physical blows and IQ from magical blows. Um, <clears throat> Vitality does have some moves that use it as damage, um, but of the four, IQ is the most broken of the stats for sure, uh, because in addition to reducing the amount of damage you take from magical attacks, it also uh, raises the damage of any moves that use it, reduces the chances you'll get inflicted with status ailments, increases the chance that you will inflict status ailments on your enemies, and I think that's it, actually. Magic defense, damage, status ailments. Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> it it's really good, uh, especially in the last section of the game. There's a lot of magical attacks, so, and there's a lot of attacks that use IQ to power them up. Um, you wouldn't think Pogo would have a lot of those, but he does. So, yeah. Let's wake our monkey buddy up. So this is Gory. Gory starts at level 4. He's got better stats than we do at this point. But that's okay. I already got the stick there. Hey, you. Get out of the way. So remember that came in right there for later. We're gonna grab all these items first, though. See what I mean by exaggerated uh, sprite animations? <clears throat> the goofiness of this chapter is just why I love it so much. Oh, fire! Fire hot! Fire hot! Uh, one thing to note is that your HP gets refilled after every battle. So, like, touching that fire didn't hurt me or anything. So, anyway, this caveman right here... is... the... I like to call him, like, the... crafting caveman. So, when you talk to him, another caveman comes into the room here. So, you can, I, I actually can't leave because there's a caveman in the door. Uh, Every time you talk to one of these cavemen, another caveman will come in. If you talk to the 20th caveman, 
to come into the room, then you get one of every crafting material. This is really useful <laughs> for obvious reasons. So, uh, so that's two cavemen, so we want to 17 more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And you just step out of the way, let them all filter through. Watch them. Looks like there's a caveman in okay. It looks like that's all of them. So then we'll talk to. And then. This is my preferred method to do this. You just hang around the door. You get one of every one of these <coughs> materials. You talk to them again, they'll leave. And the caveman is trapped in the door. So you have one caveman here. You talk to him 18 times, step out of the way, and you will get. 19 cavemen in the room, then you step in front of the door, talk to one of the cavemen, look down, talk to the caveman, get your reward. Alright, I'm going to be doing that several times off screen. Oh, he's gone. Oh no, he farted on us. Who loves, who doesn't love a good fart joke? Back here. I actually can't talk to that guy. Huh. Did vanish? Okay, so... If you go in this room right here. Get yelled at. Try to steal food. Alright, with the haystack. Push this guy out of the way. And this right here is the main, one of the main uh, game mechanics for this game. The other one is the fact that we can smell things. Uh, but we have crafting. So you take two of the uh, crafting materials here. For example, if we take this beast thing and this hard rock, it'll make a nose ornament, right? Yeah. So I'm going to actually go back and I've already prepared like a safe state where I have gone and done the uh, talk to those cavemen a bunch and then also done my crafting. I'm going to list in the video description all of my crafting that I did, <clears throat> and then we're going to just skip. We're just going to skip ahead, <laughs> basically. So I did it about 14 times, I want to say. And I have some extra stuff, um, but I'll list it. Like I said, I'll list everything that I made in the uh, video description and the recipes for each item. So, uh, here's my equipment. So for Gory, I made a beast hood, I equipped him with a hide, and then the Giga Gawakas. This is the only thing he can equip. So this is as powerful as Gory will ever get. For Pogo, I got the Ooh Mask, the Smolder Spear. There is a slightly more powerful weapon than the smolder spear, but it doesn't have any. The smolder spear has smolder spear has 10 speed on it, which allows me to get plus three speed instead of minus seven, because the wild armor has uh, a speed negative on it. But the defense is really good on the wild armor, so it's worth equipping. Uh, the Gatsun glove is just really good. The Giga Giga Walk is the only. Uh, footwear in the game and I made some nose ornaments so that I have IQ for later but right now I've got the beast fangs equipped so I can get uh, well, I think it's plus four per yeah plus four so I can get that 20 extra power because right now the only move I have is uh, 
Bash Bash. It's Bash Bash, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> let's go in this room. Well, first let's... Big stick. Yep, nope, can't go in there. I love how clear, like, the story, like, what the NPCs want from us is. Even though they never say anything, like, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. They want me to go hunting. <clears throat> we must gather meat for the tribe. the other gameplay mechanic for this chapter. Um, we have our sense of smell. Like I said, there are no random encounters in the majority of this game, but the enemies in this chapter are invisible, so you have to track them by scent. Y button? <laughs> well, you can smell the old man there, and we got... So, to advance the plot, I think you have to kill all the fights in this little area here. Which is not too hard. So, all the fights in this game take place on this kind of chessboard screen. And chess is a really good description of what's going on here. So, <clears throat> there's no MP in this game. Like, you can use any skill. The only, like, limiting factor is some of the moves require have a charge time to. Um, time does not pass as long as you're standing still. Uh, the enemy... The best way to describe this is everybody has one ATV bar that fills up. And then you can make one action when it fills up. Uh, doing anything will advance time a little bit for the enemy. So if I were to pass my turn here, uh, the enemy would gain a little bit of ATB. I'm just using the term ATB because it's it's a known quantity. You know what I mean by when I say that. If I use an item uh, or anything like that, if I move too much, the enemy will... Yeah, see how he moves? Yeah. Um... You can see there I got leveled down. You can actually have your stats lowered or raised. Some moves raise your stats. Um, I got Bang Bang there. Bang Bang is a strength based move that has knockback on it. It actually doesn't do as much damage as Bash Bash, so I very rarely use it. But it's there. I was kind of hoping to show the puppies off. You know what? We're gonna run. You can run from pretty much any battle in the game, minus like the bosses. I want to fight a puppy. Dang it. Um, there we are, puppies. Yeah. <clears throat> Some moves have AoEs on them. Uh, one of the interesting things that most people don't know about this, the battle system, is anytime you do them, if you're just moving around not doing anything, uh, everybody's, the enemies will go up just slightly, but anytime you use a move, it, the enemy gets a huge boost to their uh, turn. And oftentimes, immediately after you do something, the enemy will get a turn. I was reading that uh, task runs of this game actually use that to overflow <laughs> the enemy's uh, like turn gauge, I guess, and cause them to skip their turns. So that's neat. Love the T-Rex skull hill. Yeah. 